Welcome to Steve Means Business, the podcast dedicated to promoting and highlighting small business all across America. As an entrepreneur who has launched many small businesses in various industries over the years and blessed with the gift of gab, Steve was made for this podcast. Let's do this. Welcome to Steve Means Business, the podcast that's all about promoting small businesses all across America. Today's episode is something that's going to affect virtually all of us, unfortunately, and that's senior care and health care for both ourselves and our loved ones. Obviously, a critical topic where we need the very best advice and information possible. On that note, I'm excited to introduce somebody that could handle that all for us and I think could really give us some fantastic advice and counsel. Meet Stephanie Long from Care Patrol. Care Patrol provides senior care options based on the care needs and quality of our life and our loved ones. Stephanie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Steve. It's always good to talk with you. Absolutely. You know, this is such a critical topic that, like I said, it's going to affect ourselves and our loved ones. And this is really, this could be very intimidating. If you don't know how to navigate these waters, this is something, like I said, it's intimidating. Um, it could be very nerve wracking, very expensive. And I think what you and Care Patrol offer is, is so important, so critical to virtually all of us. I felt it was just a fantastic subject for an episode for the podcast. And, you know, I want you to tell us all about yourself and, and Care Patrol and, and how you could help so many of us navigate these, like I said, pretty tough waters. Uh, sure. I, I'm honored to uh, be here and, and share information. Uh, Care Patrol, I'm, I'm in Care Patrol of San Jose. So I am in the Santa Clara County area. And But what we do nationwide is we help seniors find assisted living, memory care, in-home care when they need it. When they can no longer live completely independently, they can find a trusted, knowledgeable local resource in Care Patrol to help them navigate what is usually an unknown uh, topic. Uh, most people don't walk into a senior living community or a, a, a residential care home for the elderly just out of curiosity when they're independent. It, so oftentimes, the first time they are confronted with the, the need to have some help um, to, to live and um, continue to thrive, um, it's a new topic for them. So I'm, I'm honored to help them you know, find the best options, the safest options that'll fit their care needs. And uh, again, it's a, a, local, a local focus that we offer. So I really <laughs> take pride in knowing the communities, the senior communities, the senior care options in the Santa Clara County and San Mateo County area. And what you said hits home. I have, unfortunately, two family members that are in uh, facilities. And, you know, once we saw their decline and, and our ability to not be able to take care of them in our home, that's when, we, like, in a panic, we run out, we do some research, and we go to our local facilities, and or we'll, we'll start working online and this, that. But it's like a panic. And, you know, it, we did actually find somebody uh, before I knew of your franchise, and, and this was years back, um, where we, a friend of a friend had some experience in this industry, and we leaned on them, and had we not, we would just be God knows where. I mean, we just were, you know, shooting in the dark. We had no idea what's going on, and they were able to, to do that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how it works for the patient, um, you know, how from like a cost perspective, does it cost them or what have you? Walk us through how potentially that would work for the patient or the customer or the client in this, in this case. Yeah, so we work with clients when they need to find safer options in their geographic area that fit their budget. Um, what often happens is um, a senior um, gets to a point where they realize uh, you know, it's a lot to have to manage a home, uh, manage grocery shopping, manage meal prep, um, and, and even just having challenges with the activities of daily living, as we call them. The activities of daily living are the things that we need to do every day, like 
get dressed or, you know, comb our hair, brush our teeth, take a shower, you know, get up mm -hmm. out of bed and walk across our, our home. And sometimes those activities of daily living can be um, a challenge as we get older. Um, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it can be a situation where it kind of comes up on you slowly over time where you realize um, that a safer option may be to have some assistance um, available always to, to be there for you. But other times it can come on kind of suddenly um, where you have a, a senior that may have had a fall or a stroke or, or some kind of just sudden acute condition that happens and they need to find care options quickly. So what we do is we'll meet with the, the family, the senior, uh, wherever they are um, in their home. Maybe it's in a, the hospital or at a skilled nursing facility. Uh, wherever they happen to be, uh, we do a very detailed discovery process where, you know, my goal is to really understand what are this particular senior's unique care needs? What are their preferences when it comes to hobbies or interests? Uh, what was their, what was their career profession? Uh, what was their life's work? Um, Learn. I also like to. You know, we need to learn a lot about their financial situation and their their geographic preferences. Where are their family members? Where are their advocates? So that we can help them understand what are the best, safest options that fit all those parameters. And what we do is we'll tour. Uh, we'll, we'll present options to the family. And we will tour with the family. We will go with them to these different care homes to help them understand what's, what's um, on offer there, um, help them ask questions, really help them navigate that whole decision process. And, you know, just for full transparency. So we, I do this because I have a heart for working with seniors. Um, but it is a business. And uh, just so you know, there is uh, the, the way that the business, um, the way that I'm paid is I'm paid a referral fee by the communities with whom I work that are part of my network. And I only work with the safest, um, best maintained, most reliable, best reputation, highest care quality um, homes. So I'm paid a referral fee by them. Um, it's that way we can keep this service completely free to families. There's no cost right. to families whatsoever. All right. So, so for your services, for your counsel, your advice, your mm -hmm. doing the legwork, doing the research as to yep. placing people in essence in, in the most appropriate setting, mm -hmm. there is no cost whatsoever to the patient for your services, correct? Correct. Correct. And that's because that's we great. are. Yes. I, I think that that takes a huge burden or uh, that's, a, that's a big relief for the client in this case where they don't have to worry about that. And they know that um, irrespective of, you know, that's not a factor in where you would look to place them. Um, you just want, the, you want them to get the best possible care. And, Correct. you know, tell us a little bit about, as I was, you know, reading up on Care Patrol, your franchise in essence, or you're part of a nationwide network. They've got a long storied history. Tell us a little bit about Care Patrol, the, the support they have as a nationwide company with you know a stellar reputation in this field. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Care Patrol, we just celebrated our 30th anniversary as a company. Uh, it was started by the Bon Giovanni's 30 years ago, and they recognized that, you know, Chuck Bon Giovanni as a social worker had recognized that oftentimes, you know, clients he was working with uh, could really benefit from being in a better care setting. So what I love about working for Care Patrol and having a Care Patrol franchise is that I can have a fantastic, experienced, supportive community uh, in Care Patrol and among the other Care Patrol franchisees. But I also have the ability to offer these services in a very localized, a personalized manner in Santa Clara County. So I appreciate the, the, you know, the, the 30 years of experience to help me always kind of hone my best practices, um, really help us have the best um, methodology for ensuring that we are researching 
and finding the safest care options. I, I, I've learned a lot from my fellow franchisees uh, along the way. So I think there's a great benefit to having that network behind me, but also um, combining that with my just personal commitment and love of my local community where I I've, grew up. I think that's great. It sounds like it's in essence, the best of both worlds. They get that local personalization from you and you're based in Santa Clara County, just to reiterate mm-hmm. for some of the folks that, you know, people will be joining this podcast periodically. If you're out of Santa Clara County in California, uh, but you have that support of the mothership for lack yeah. of a better word behind you. Um, and then here's a question I, I would have. So you being in, in the, in the Bay area, Santa Clara, Cary, mm-hmm. Let's say a family member or a friend uh, had somebody in another part, let's say Southern California or Central California, or even in a different state. Do you have the ability to do some, uh, can you refer them to um, a franchisee uh, in their local jurisdiction or or community so you could, you know, give them that same type of service? But you have partners that you collaborate with that can help somebody in, let's say, out of state or, or another part of California? Yeah, absolutely. And I've done that. I've had uh, friends, uh, people in my network reach out to me who have loved ones in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, New England, uh, different parts of the country. And what I love is that I do have counterparts across the country in different markets where they are the local resource, where they know the safest and best uh, care options where they know uh, the the also the the regulations, right? So every state is different. Oh, that's a great point. Assisted living is regulated by states. It's not regulated by Medicare because it's not it's not a um, assisted living is not a medical facility. These are care facilities, so they're regulated by the states. Every state has different ways of referring to care homes. Uh, has different ways of licensing them and has different requirements. Uh, There's a lot of similarities, but certain states can do things a little bit differently. So the nice thing about having a a network of uh, care, senior care experts is they're experts in their local territory. So I know when I'm referring um, a client or a friend with a loved one elsewhere that they're going to be in really great hands. That, that's a great point. Um, that really is. So you're, you have a big reach all across the country versus yeah. just locally in the Bay Area. And, and like you said, that's a good point to reiterate because I would have thought or, you know, or before I needed to do this for a family member, that this is a federal issue. One size fits all across 50 states. And clearly that's not the case at all. And, and, and what have you. Yeah, so nursing homes are different from assisted living. I guess this is a a, a topic we can educate people on a little bit because it is sometimes confusing. Uh, So hospitals and skilled nursing facilities are regulated by Medicare. So there's a federal aspect to it. But it's after that step, after you've been in the hospital and then maybe discharged to a skilled nursing facility or a nursing home, for further rehabilitation, for you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy. After that, what is the next step? For many seniors, it, it can be assisted living is the best choice, or it may be necessary uh, because they need more help. But they don't need medical care. They need personal care. They need help with their activities of daily living. They need help getting mm-hmm. dressed. They need help showering. They need help with meal prep. So. Uh, assisted living facilities, those are, again, they're care facilities, not medical, therefore regulated by the states. And, you know, here in Santa Clara County and in California as a whole, um, what I'm I'm proud of is that the state of California does a, a pretty darn good job of doing regular inspections and providing that, um, those reports uh, to, um, you know, to, to the public, I know how to access those reports, find those reports. So I can do a really well researched, um, recommendation for my clients, but yeah, it's an important (laughs) distinction, uh, care homes versus nursing homes. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. I mean, I think that just builds confidence for your clients and your patients hearing all that. It's not just a, you know, uh, a casual, 
process where it's they throw a name It's not just based on Google so, reviews or Yelp reviews. We know, yeah, that's... Those can, yeah. those can help, or, or those can be at one factor, but I think it's really important for people to know that um, there are very, very detailed inspections, uh, mm -hmm. a very comprehensive set of regulations that these uh, assisted living facilities have to follow, whether they're, they're big or small, whether they're a big community with, you know, 120 apartments uh, and a, a pool and, you know, a gym and a salon, or it's a very small residential care home with just six residents, they all have to follow these same regulations. And they're all held to the same standards in California. And um, all of that data on the care home's performance uh, to to complying with these regulations is is on record. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I use that as well as my client's feedback and my personal knowledge and visits of these care homes, my own personal observations and notes and, and meetings with the care home owners. And, and that, that brings me that that's, you just kind of stole my thunder, but in a good way. Sorry. So <laughs> when people, no, no, that's good. No, I, I, this yeah. is all about you. I mean, you're the expert here. So people understand this. It's not just like a zoom call or a telephone call. Well, you go, when they're looking at options and different facilities, Mm -hmm. Will you go meet with them face to face at their mm -hmm. home or a, a coffee shop or a neutral site or, yeah. or take them or meet them at the facility? Walk us through a little bit how it works for you when you're working with a client or a patient as you're trying to identify and ultimately choose the right facility for them. Yeah, it usually starts with a phone call. Uh, and I like to you know get a little bit of um, kind of. Uh, some basic information about the current situation with um, the senior. And then oftentimes I'll meet in person with their, um, with themselves, or if they can't meet in person, um, um, meet with their, their um, responsible party, whether it's their adult children or their spouse. And then at some point, hopefully I get out there to meet the senior themselves. If they're in the hospital or the skilled nursing facility or in their home, wherever they happen to be. But yes, I uh, oftentimes after that first kind of initial phone call, initial discovery, I'll go meet in person with the family, with the senior if possible. And then I do go with the family to visit these care homes in person. And it's not the first time I've been to these homes. Uh, so a lot of the time, you know, in the background, when I'm not working with a client, what I'm doing is I'm going out and visiting care homes, doing tours just for my own research and knowledge so uh, I can have a good understanding of what they offer. So one of the things to know with assisted living is they all have to follow the same set of regulations, but they don't all have to offer the same care. So what's important for me to know with each care home is, well, what are the policies of this care home? What are, um, what are, conditions that they're willing to accept, which ones don't they accept. Um, if they have a nurse on staff, that can allow them to offer other things, other, other care, but it doesn't require them to. So it's really important for me to do my homework. Um, when I'm, you know, when I'm not working with clients out and about with clients, um, I'm always out and about though. I spend a lot of time in my car driving around mm -hmm. to meet, you know, new or revisit um, existing care home administrators and their communities. Right. I, I would imagine. And, and that's good. So you're doing your homework, you're doing your research. Yeah. So as you probably have, a, a, your clients may have a, a whole variety of conditions and, yes. and, you know, facility A might be better for John Doe, facility B might be better for Jane Doe, Absolutely. what have you. And the beauty of you having all that homework done, if you will, beforehand or in, in parallel with them is, let's say you do your discovery call on a Wednesday, but Monday, Tuesday, you were researching appropriate facilities for this client. You have a basic idea of their conditions and this and that, and you say, hey, I think, you know, this facility might be a good fit for this client I'm about to get on the phone with for first initial discovery. And, and that's working smart. That's working, thinking a couple steps ahead. And by the time you do that call, you can say, hey, Mrs. Smith, you know, boy, um, I think we may have just the right facility for your needs. 
let's take a look at facility XYZ, talk about it, then you go there, meet with the family and the care, you know, their caregivers, and you've now just worked really efficient and smart. And um, before you know it, you might have a great match because of some of that homework you've done, some of that reconnaissance, if you will, and some of that, um, you know, work on the, on the, in, in a proactive way before you actually did the call with the client. Yeah, and I think that that is, thank you, that's a, a, a you know, lay this up for me. I think that's an important <laughs> point in that working efficient is key here because most of the time my clients are coming to me from a skilled nursing facility. They've been discharged there after a hospital stay uh, where they maybe had a fall, a fracture, a stroke. So they're in skilled nursing. And there's only so much time that they can be in skilled nursing before they're discharged. And so we are often working with a compressed timeline. And it is mm -hmm. really important that the senior living advisor like myself that you're working with, whoever you're working with, um, it's really important that they know the options and have relationships with these communities in your area because you, you don't have the luxury of time, you know, your, your senior loved one may not be able to go home, but they can't stay in that skilled nursing facility forever, nor, nor would, mm -hmm. would you want to, right? There's going to be right. a discharge date and it's usually coming up faster than anyone expects. So having the ability to know um, your community, me knowing my community, knowing the care mm -hmm. home administrators, um, you know, does bring a lot of efficiency and you want to get it right the first time. This is a scary time for seniors. Um, they, they you know, the idea of like, okay, I've got to make a move away from a house that maybe I've lived in for 30, 40, 50 years is mm -hmm. daunting. Imagine it for us, how it would feel to like have I, to, I... <laughs> yeah, it's scary. So you want to get the match right the first time. It is, you, you don't want to move people around. You want to get that match done the first time so they can settle in. They can adjust, they can get to know the caregivers, they can get to know maybe their other community neighbors in that community and really have the best, the best next chapter. So um, that's super important. Um, and when it comes to one other thing I just want to mention, um, you know, with, with seniors along this note is every senior is different and there is a huge variety in what care homes offer huge variety in size in care capabilities um budget so yeah being able to work efficiently through all of those different options is important so that we can get the right match i'm, I'm glad you brought that up i was going to ask the facilities that you work with um they must cover a, a wide variety of conditions whether it be physical mental and or both um palliative care, I mean, you know, it can run the gamut. And um, that's important that you have that Rolodex, for lack of a better word, excuse me, of facilities that, that can cater to so many different medical conditions and needs. It's not a one size fits all. You don't just stick somebody in facility X. I mean, they really, you want it to be, you are catered to their needs and their wants for their conditions. And I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people may think it's just okay. It's a generic facility and, and what have you. They need, you know, something specialized for Alzheimer's or dementia or, yeah. or Parkinson's or something like that, yeah. or or like a like a broken hip or or you know a physical thing versus a mental. And uh, that, I'm really glad that that you mentioned that because that was going to be one of my questions about tell me the the variety of different conditions that that facilities can cater to. Yeah. So assisted living. Um, again, it, it's personal care. It's not medical care. But if that community happens to have a nurse on staff, they um, may be able to handle a, a diabetic condition where the senior needs um, insulin shots and they're no longer able to manage those shots themselves. So like that's one really good example of you know, understanding what the specific needs of the, of the senior, is, um, what their specific needs are, because if they have diabetic um, need, if they're diabetic and they, they have the need for insulin injections, that takes us down a different route. That's a really important filter. Um, same thing if they're like, if they're ambulatory or non-ambulatory, that takes us down, you know, a different route. It, 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 
it narrows the options. Um, or if there's a cognitive diagnosis, there are facilities that have the secure environment um, to help uh, meet the, the needs of those with dementia or Alzheimer's and to keep them safe. So it's yeah very important to understand what is what is needed so that you can put them in you know recommend the right the right um, facility based on their needs. No, I, I think it's important. You know, maybe it's it's a tough subject. I mean, it's not easy. Let's face it, but no, it's it's, it's critical, <laughs> right? Right, and and God bless the work you're doing. I mean, I think this really is a calling. And yes, you're a business owner. Um, there's you know there's no question about it, and you're a franchise owner. But I think this is a calling when people in healthcare, and it says to anybody I meet in healthcare, it is absolutely a calling. Do you want to help others um, along? You know, in, in, you know, yeah. our health is number one. If we don't have our health, not a whole lot else matters, uh, frankly. And um, I, I think that's fantastic. As we you know wrap this up, any last uh, words you want? And I'm going to have obviously banners with all your contact information and, and how they can reach you and, and the name yeah. of your facility, like I said, because people join the podcast at different stages. So I'll include all that, all the links and everything so they can get in touch with you. But any last messages you want to get out to people as the as we wrap this up? And like I said, this is such an important uh, topic for people. Uh, I would just say I, I, I really appreciate what you said about um, how important it is to meet individuals care needs and also dignity i think that is one of the driving forces that guide my work is you know i i have loved ones in my family um who are incredibly dear to me and they've worked so hard their entire lives um, and they've given to their families and i think what motivates me um to do this work is because i want to honor and respect, um, and, and show that, that honor and, and respect that I have for all the sacrifices that they've made through their lives. And I want to give them the very best, um, kind of golden years. I want them to have all of the dignity and all of the, the best ability to thrive. So that's what guides me and why I do this. And, um, and I appreciate you giving me the time to, to share what I do because it is an honor to help seniors. It is an honor to help families in what can be a stressful time. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you giving me the chance. To you know, I, I mean, I think that's important. And I, I, I don't know if I was going to mention this now, but I'm going to now. I actually met Stephanie. Um, it has literally been about 24 years ago or 23 years ago. We met through another industry. Yeah. And I had a chance to um, interact with her 23 years ago. And I'm proud of the fact that we still have this working relationship. Uh, yeah. 23 years later, I think that speaks to her integrity. Um, and she really is a, a, such a nice person. She's sharp as, as could be. Um, and, and just like I said, it, it speaks to her character. And now that she's putting all those traits together to help others, I think that that's something pretty neat and special. And I, I knew I wanted to help her spread the word uh, once I heard that she was in, in this industry and helping others in, like I said, in such a, a critical aspect of our lives. So uh, I, I think that, that that makes a difference. And uh, according to some of the noise, we have Archie. Archie hasn't photobombed our set yet, but he, he might at any point in time. I love him to photobomb. Right. I love dogs. Well, well, okay, hold on. On that note, oh, and if a senior because, has a dog, that's important to know, too, because some places will take their pets. Anyway, I, I was going to bring, see how we, we just incorporate Archie into every <laughs> possible piece of business. Yeah. No, it's important. And I When I had my previous lab, uh, Jack, um, the black laboratory retriever, I was fortunate enough to take him to the VA, to the schools, to the hospitals. Yes. And it is unbelievable how they perk up yeah. when they see that dog. It, it changes that they went from a, maybe a very sad, depressed state to they see that dog and like, who doesn't love him? And I'm going to see if we can get Archie up here without me exposing the bald spot entirely here, folks. You know, so Archie, come here, buddy. Yeah. So Archie, Let me see. Archie. Archie is a little too, <laughs> there we go. Right. How about hey, this for impromptu? Hey, Archie. We're going to try and get Archie in that program like his predecessor, Jack, but Archie's got a little bit too much energy right now. He's a three-year-old chocolate lab, and he can be a sweetheart, but he could also be a little bit of a maniac at times. He's but, enthusiastic. He's enthusiastic. And, and that's he's right. Got that's a lot right. of love to give. He does. He, <laughs> he loves his middle name. But if you can, for a quick second, 
Just yeah. talk about that. If the if the client has a dog, yeah, or in some facilities, because I know where one of my family members, they're very welcoming of the dog. We bring the dog. They bring the dog over to visit all the time, and it yeah. absolutely just makes their day to have their dog there. It lifts their spirits so much. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So some communities are pet friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. The usual requirement is that the senior needs to be able to care for the dog because otherwise it will fall on the caregivers and the caregivers are really there to care for the humans. Um, so mm -hmm. most, you know, the, the requirement is as long as the senior can care for the uh, pet. There mm -hmm. is, I see cats, I see dogs. Um, a lot of the communities have um, the pet area, the dog area, um, you know, pet relief area, um, the dog right. park. Um, you can, all, I see dog walkers coming in and out of some of the bigger communities where, you know, residents can hire a dog walker. If um, going for a walk, you know, if the dog needs more walking, then that senior might be able to provide. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they, a lot of them welcome. Um, and if they, um, at the smaller uh, homes, boarding care homes, where they're more geared toward um, higher acuity care, um, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll bring in, I've seen them bring in like bunnies, um, or you can sure. bring in a pet for a visit. Uh, maybe it can't right. stay there, but, you know, the the spouse or the adult children can bring in the pets for a visit. So, yeah, um, animals, I think, are wonderful for people's spirits, and there are ample opportunities for pets to do what they do best which is couldn't to love couldn't us agree more <laughs> yeah couldn't agree more as long as archie has treats he's pretty self-sufficient yeah. he can he can right he doesn't need a lot of care but right he, he responds quite well to treats but we'll put him down for now so Super he doesn't cute. kill me here but yeah no archie's he's a good dog but no i think that's great and like i said um i really appreciate you getting this message out. i think this is this is one of the more important topics i'll i'll ever have on the podcast because this is going to affect all of us at some point in time in our lives. And I think um, having a, a subject matter expert and, and a confidant and a friend and someone so caring as you, uh, anybody that engages with Stephanie will love her. She's just fantastic. And I, I, I honestly, uh, I am biased to her. She, she's she's just you. a great gal, but also sharp as a tech. And I think this is exactly the kind of advocate you always are. You always hear that cliche, you must have an advocate or must be your own advocate, but when you can't be your own, you need someone like Stephanie to help you navigate these waters because it, it can be intimidating and tricky. That's for sure. So thanks once again. I'm sure we'll, we'll talk down the line. If there's some updates or some new developments, uh, we'd love to have you back again on a future episode. And once again, um, you know, um, like I said, I'll get all your information out. Thank you so much for sharing all this info with us. You, Steve, it was so fun to talk with you. I really appreciate it. Always, It's always a pleasure to work with you and talk with you. You bet. Take care, yes. Steph. That's going to do it for today's episode of Steve Means Business. Be sure to subscribe and share this podcast with all your friends. Keep a heads up for episodes every week.